Hey everyone, Scott Norris here. So I uh, hope everyone's uh, keeping nice and sane, uh, being locked in their houses. Uh, this is hopefully, uh, I think it will be, the final uh, series in the Blueprinting 101. Uh, and then next I'll move on to another series with Extensibility 101 um, and, and go from there. Uh, so today I just wanted to cover something that we haven't covered uh, in the previous uh, four parts. And that's the cloud native services, being able to use them on the canvas um, and, and how we do, right? Um, now, this is going to be very specific, right? It's going to be very specific to the cloud service that you want to provision to. And while we've been looking at cloud, you know, agnostic capability, obviously, when you start using cloud specific services, that's very specific for that one cloud. Now, one of the benefits here, right, is that you can start using these blueprints to redesign your applications in such a way that the whole app doesn't need to be redesigned. So what's very popular is a lot of organizations, they're using, they've got database backends for their applications. Maybe they've got quite an expensive Oracle or MSSQL or something equivalent uh, on premise. And a very simple, easy swap over is to start consuming, you know, cloud, cloud database services like DBAS essentially, uh, and, and replace those those expensive uh, big iron systems. So in this one, we'll have a look at, um, probably just have a look at a, a full cloud native app, but also let's just have a look at as database as a service, right? Um, but being able to swap them out means that you, your code or your app doesn't need rewrite. You're just changing the infrastructure on the back end and the database that it's pointing to. A lot of organizations have got quite large pipes to AWS and Azure and GCP and everything else and it's like it's running on on premise anyway um, but obviously those using VMC uh, on AWS right uh, you, you can then start actually having and one of the big benefits is is you can run your uh, virtual machines as you do today in VMware and then you can start actually consuming those cloud native AWS services uh, like RDS and S3 and have that native backplane um, interconnection uh, speeds uh, to those services, right? And you can start consuming them too. So let's have a look at this. So, all right, let's uh, let's have a look at a new blueprint. We're going to go RDS because that's just something I'll choose. RDS is very popular, uh, and we'll choose our uh, project that it's going to be a part of. So I'll just create that now. Uh, once this loads up, as we can see, we've got a lot of uh, different capabilities down the side here, right? So in AWS, we've got S3 buckets, we've got Route 53, Redshift, RDS, Lambda, uh, KMS, Kinesis, IAM, uh, EMR, and uh, DB, and API Gateway. We've got our configuration management, obviously, but then we've got our other ones, so the Microsoft, the, the Traffic Manager, the Storage, their SQLs, the Search, Redis, their Key Vaults, their Functions of Service, and their Database, and then their App Service, so their DNS, sorry. And their app services, so we can drag and all these onto the canvas. Now, unlike the unlike the just the straight out, you know, the the networks, the volumes, the compute, um, you, you do need to know a bit about the services that you're consuming, right? It's not um, VRA doesn't handhold as much uh, in this aspect uh, because you do need to know what what. Um, options you need to fill in and what their values are. Now, when this is offered up as a service, that's handled by the whoever creating the service and just surfacing it up for consumption. And you don't have to worry about it with smart forms and all the rest of it, right? So all that can be happening. So let's go RDS. So I want, a, I want an RDS instance, but I don't have a cluster either. So this is a way we can actually stand up a cluster and instance and we can do some things and we tear it all down and it all gets destroyed, right? So let's drag out a cluster here and let's drag out a instance over here. So we can see on the side here, I'm actually just going to change this to RDS cluster uh, one and I'll change this to just instance one. There we go. All right. So we've got our, we've got our instance and we've got our cluster. Now I want to connect my instance to this cluster. Cool. So you can see that it's already already filled this out. Now, as part of these, we've actually got a lot of different properties we can put in here, right? We can put in all these different ones. So everything from the the availability zone that it's in, the number account, the database names, 
the engine that you want to run, whether it's an SQL engine or no SQL, those sort of things, right? So there's a lot of different capabilities here. Now, not all of them are um, mandatory and some that VRA will actually fill in for you, like name if you don't put it in there. So first and foremost, we need to put in our region. So our region here is whatever region we want to put into. Now for, for me, it's AP Southeast um, 2. Right. So that's my region. Now my account will pick up automatically based on the accounts that I have put into the um, my cloud accounts that I've got here. So there's my cloud account. Uh, identifier, this is just something uh, that we can uh, use so for this I'll put uh, YouTube demo right. instance class so these are the class the size of the instances so um, RDS has different instance types so it would be uh, db dot t two dot small since I've got to pay for this I want it to be small um, and then you can obviously go into here and you can click on these and it'll tell you what it, you know, what it needs to be. So there's a lot of help here uh, for you. Um, and if we go into there, we can see we've got all these capabilities. So the engine and all of this. So I'm just going to leave it. Now, I believe if you don't put the engine in, it's just going to be in SQL uh, by default. Uh, and then we've got to do our cluster. So again, our cluster, our region's the same. So this is where you can start having inputs. Now I'm gonna, not gonna do inputs here. We obviously covered inputs in part two, um, but you can put the inputs here so you can only just fill it in once and it fills out everywhere else, right? Um, and we need the account as well. So there are two that could be identical there. Um, and then within this though, we do actually need some other ones. Oh. Uh, that are mandatory, uh, that'll have a go. So within here, we need our uh, database name. So here I'll go. Now there's also other tricks, there's, and this is AWS limitations, but can only, can only have alphanumeric characters and kind of have dashes and those sort of things. So um, I'll just go uh, VME uh, class zero one as an example and then we can have our passwords and usernames again you could have these filled in as um, inputs with being encrypted but I'm gonna not do that right now just to make it nice and nice and simple so password again um, pass word one two three four bang that'll do and put quotes around that and username will have db admin zero one there it can be anything right all right so that's complaining about something at the moment ah yes i'll do it all right, cool. So I think that's everything that needs to be done. Um, obviously, we can add a lot more, but right now that's looking nice and healthy, right? So let's let's do a test first, make sure. All right, cool. As it says, I only test the syntax. It doesn't actually test whether you know the inputs are correct um, for AWS. And let's deploy this. So let's go uh, RDS. Uh, as a service uh, version, current draft, deploy that. All right, so that's going to go off and deploy, hopefully. So now, if we go back to one of my other ones, now this is something I wrote um, some time ago, and it's an actual application. Um, just a, a simple web app that uses a bunch of users Lambda and API Gateway. Now you can see here I've got an application and I haven't used any IaaS, right? I haven't used any networking, I haven't used any volumes. It's purely just cloud native services. Um, so if we look at this, we've got our, our Lambda permissions. So I'm setting the permissions on my Lambda function. 
um, my lambda function is grabbing uh, the 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 actual function as a zip file uh, from an S3 bucket, right? Um, and again, I could probably have an S3 bucket there and do a bunch of other things. Uh, and then we've got our, our API gateway. So we're using multiple different things here. So we've got our actual um, REST API here, we can see. Um, we've got our integration. So what we want to integrate with the method. We've got our method that we're using as well. And then we've actually got our cloud service. So if I was to deploy this, and we'll just go um, gateway app as an example, and hit next, and I'll go um, 16. There you go, that'll do. Deploy. All right, so that's going to go off and deploy. Now, if we have a look at our AWS console, there we go. So it's currently creating the YouTube demo uh, that's available there. It's created this uh, with all the configurations that we've given. It's uh, MySQL. Um, there's not much. See, there's my VME plus zero one as my database name. We've got our database username and we've got our password that's been put in there. We haven't told it to be multi AZ, but you know, you can set all these up. So you can see that it's actually creating there. Um, as we speak, uh, which is great. Now, if we were to go to our API gateway, there's our dot 16 um, that was just created today. We can go in and have a look at that. And we can see that the everything's been set there. There's the testy test 02 on Lambda. So if we go to the Lambda service, there it is there, and it was last modified 12 seconds ago, so it's just been created, which is awesome. So you can come into here, and we can see the trigger's been added in there for the API gateway. Um, it's got the code in here for it. So we can see that from this, and it's already completed, we can see from this that it's um, already done. So we can go into here, um, we can actually see all the different configurations uh, that has been, that's been set up uh, for the functions, the permissions, integration, uh, we've got all that. Uh, now if we go back to, there's our six resources, our API gateway, um, it's created all of them, awesome, right? Um, this one is still creating, let's go and have a look at the service so yeah it's creating the instance at the moment so i think we knew that if we go back to rds yep still creating our youtube demo configuration so you see the config, we didn't really put much in there, but if we went back to Cloud Assembly, um, you can see that there is a lot of different capabilities that we can put in all these to fully set it up. So obviously I've just done the bare minimum to get it to deploy here just to show um, what's capable. And look, you can create applications with all these. Now, the great thing is, is that you can drag them all out, you can connect them together, so all the dependencies, and it automatically fills out what's required. So the cluster identifier, for instance, you know, an instance requires a cluster identifier. Now I could just drag uh, RDS cluster instance out here, right? Um, but I would need to know what that cluster identifier is. I'll need to know what that ID was that I was connecting to. And then it will just create another instance um, on that cluster, right? So you can do it all together. You can do one, but yeah, those things that get automatically filled in when you create and link them, um, you would have to fill them out yourself um, with a known existing um, cluster that you wanted to connect these to, right? So, um, look, that's nice and easy. And look, this is because this is so open to what you can do. Um, I'll leave it there. 
I won't, won't dive in it too more, but you can see that you do require some knowledge of the cloud service. Um, but obviously the idea of this is that this would be created, this would be offered up as, as a service, and then people can consume that via code. And from the business point of view, all the configurations that have been made will be nice drop downs, will be um, intelligently derived, and the guardrails are set up. So you're able to you know, offer this up as a service and it gets created in the right place, the right location, on the right size um, for your business requirements. And you get to track and audit and do everything with these, right? So you can um, delete them, you can make modifications to them um, when they're actually deployed, you can have day two actions against them um, once they're deployed as well. So you can start, you can continue to manage them. You know, they don't need to, they don't need to be managed through the AWS portal. Um, you can actually have self-service management uh, through this. So hopefully this creates soon. Um, oh yeah, look, it's done. Created seven minutes ago. So if we go back here, uh, hopefully if we change that, it's now available. Yep. Great. Uh, so that's up and running and um, ready to be consumed. So if we, I don't know if there is, oh. yep. All right, so I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you, hope you got a, a lot of information out of this series. Um, I will do a probably an advanced or an immediate series later on down the track, um, but what I've put down should be able to get most uh, most people going and start playing around. And once you start playing around, you start thinking about all this cool stuff you could do um, and all this cool automation and you know how I can offer this up and how this brings value to my business. Um, so have a good one and don't go too crazy being stuck inside. Till next time. Cheers, bye.